Today I have a very interesting RC airplane to look at. So it's the new E-Flight RV7 1100mm wingspan RC airplane. And today's video is going to be a little bit different from uh, most of my videos because I'm going to do an unbox, a build, a TX setup, flight of course, and uh, some uh, thoughts on the end. So let's jump into the unboxing. I've been really waiting on this one to arrive and here it is. So it's a nice box and if you just open up this box you have uh, like two foam pieces to remove. So use just uh, some sort of cutting tool to open up these parts to access the content of the box. So it's really easy to do it. So with these two pieces removed you can actually access the main wing. This wing uh, comes fully assembled, so you don't have to assemble anything. And here we have the quick connectors for the aileron, the flaps and the LED lights. And on the other side we have all the servo, servos, uh, everything is mounted already. And here we have the four screws that uh, screws into the fuselage. And the same thing on this side. And uh, you also have these nice LED lights uh, on the wing tips. So it's a really featured wing and easy to assemble. And by removing additional two foam pieces, you can access the fuselage. And it's a really nicely done fuse with the usual E-Flight pilot inside. And to the rear you can see the tail wheel is already assembled and also the rudder uh, linkage is connected and here you have the quick connectors for the main wing and the mount for the landing gears so it's a really simple one and if you open up this hatch then you have uh, first off you have the new receiver which is the 631 receiver and you have the EC3 plug and the bind plug and the antenna is actually held by a piece of tape so there's ample room inside to put almost any battery and really easy and you can see everything in a good way also. Next up is the spinner. So the spinner is uh, made up of two plastic pieces. So the back plate and the, the front part of the spinner. And then you have the uh, carbon rod to uh, stabilize and uh, reinforce the uh, rear stabilizer and the rear stabil stabilizer are made up of two halves and it's the same nice stickers as the main wing and there are some nice scale details on the top side next up is the uh, prop and the few screws that you have to use to assemble this one. So first off, uh, it does come with a 11 by 7, I believe, prop, um, which resembles very much the the prop for the Turbo Team Revolution. And here's the plastic bag with the few parts you need to assemble this RC airplane: a few plastic pieces, a bind plug, and a few screws. And the last parts are actually the main landing gears. So they have a nice steel pin inside and plastic um, around them. Looks really nice with these um, stickers as well. And these wheels are uh, stiff, but uh, I suppose they will work. As you can see, there are very few parts uh, in the box and I, I suppose the assembly will go really quick and swift so let's start building it the only two tools you actually need is a two millimeter hex drive and this uh, cross uh, screwdriver so uh, let's start with the landing gears i know i'm not really following the instruction manual but it's always good to get the landing gears on an rc airplane first to have some support and use these two uh, plastic pieces and they are uh, made so you cannot put them in the wrong way so just uh, um, push them in as far as possible uh, and after that you have uh, four screws the shorter screws to secure the landing gears 
So I'm using my two millimeter hex drive. As always uh, with plastic, you, you want to be a little bit careful not to over tighten anything so that the plastic won't break. So in general, uh, all these E-Flight, modern E-Flight RC airplanes, they have um, very few parts and screws to assemble to get the, an RC airplane in order. So it's a, it's a really good uh, design uh, they made from almost all their modern RC airplanes. So there's the landing gears attached then. And now it's time for the main wing, so just be sure to actually have these connectors aligned and not to, uh, with the wing connector, and not to um, have them in the wrong angle to damage. So just be a little bit careful, let it slide in a gentle way. And then you have four screws to attach the main wing, and I'm usually starting to tighten in a diagonal way. So I know that the one end will uh, grip and then go, move on to the next end and see that it also grips and then work on the other diagonal. And when you usually secure the wing to the fuse, uh, you want some minor compression, uh, but not over tightening. So over tightening is never good but you still have to have a good fit, especially as this uh, connector is inside. So you have to make sure that the, uh, the wing is securely mounted and that the connectors are actually tight and have a good connection. So there's the wing attached then. So far I had like eight screws to attach the landing gears in the main wing and it looks really good. Then it's time to move on to the rear stabilizer. So these two halves then are the parts you need to assemble and this uh, rod spar as well. So I'm just starting to find out the uh, the right side where the servo horn is and put it in the uh, slot for it. And then use the rod spar and gently just push it in all the way. And then use the uh, second half Make sure that it doesn't damage anything. And now the two uh, elevator parts should actually be connected so you can move one end and the other moves as well. So to uh, secure these two rear stabilizer wing uh, halves, you actually have these two short black screws. So there's one on each end and then our, uh, there is actually a little bit tight uh, because the servo linkage is in the way. So I'm using this cross screwdriver. And uh, as, as all these other parts, uh, be sure not, not to over tighten it, but make a, a good connection. And I believe that this uh, rear stabilizer, as you actually do screw uh, through the, um, the stabilizer, it doesn't matter if you're not um, uh, really it's super tight but just make sure that it's a good fit and after that you have to attach the clevis to the servo horn so first just find the other hole and uh, press it together and then use the silicone ring just to secure it next step is to attach the spinach you have this these two plastic parts and using the flat round one and here I have the spin nut, which you have to secure. So first off, just put this one on. And after that, you take the three bladed prop. And you see that this edge uh, is the one that, that pushes the air. So the rear side is actually blank and this one has paint. So the paint should be facing forward. And then use this uh, spinner nut to secure the prop and spinner back part of the spinner and I'm using my hex uh, driver to actually uh, tighten this one and you don't want to have a good tight fit but not too tight because this spinner uh, prop adapters do actually break quite easily if you over tighten them so next thing is then to have this tiny screw in the spinner cone 
attached with the two millimeter hex driver as well. I think it's fantastic to have only have like two tools to get the plane together. So that's just great. So everything works and it spins freely. The last parts are these two plastic steps which you glue into place. So you can either use the these steps or you can use another included part which is these cover plates. I usually don't attach these because I, I don't know if I want to assemble the plane. So the, the nice thing about uh, Horizon Hobby RC airplanes and especially the E-Flight brand is that they come together so easy and every, every part just fits together in a good way. Uh, so let's go into the TX setup then, which is also uh, really, really simple. I'm using my NX10 uh, to set this one up. So let's just go into the setup video. Now I'm going to do a TX setup for the RV7 on my NX10. So first off, let's boot the TX. Once you actually boot this one, you go into menu and select system setup and yes. On the model select then, press this option and go down to add new model. Uh, and just pick this one, which is a normal RC airplane and click create. It takes a few seconds. And now you created a new blank RC model. So let's go into model name then and uh, name this one. A simple name like R V. Let's find a minus and a seven. So just by pressing back, you actually save this name. So just go back. And under aircraft type, then you have to select which wing, and the RV7 does feature flaps and uh, ailerons so on the wing then let's choose the one aileron and one flap which is the correct one for this one and go to next and then you can just go back so by going back one more we going to actually set up the flap system so just go into the menu and scroll down to flap system uh, you can choose first of which switch so i'm going to press this once and i Usually use this switch, which is G. So just by turning this one, I've selected the G switch and then press this once more. Now I have to set up according to the manual. So for the uh, up flap position, according to the manual, this should be minus 100. So I'm setting this one to minus 100. And then under takeoff flap, it should be zero and elevator mix should be minus two. So let's select minus two. And then on landing flaps, so position two, which is the uh, down flap position, it should be 45. So let's uh, select 45 and the elevator mix should be two. Uh, I always use a, a two second delay or uh, speed change. So by selecting two seconds, I actually have two seconds to change from one position to another. So uh, by just going back, then I actually set up the, the TX to have the right uh, aircraft type and the flap system. Another thing which is always good is just to press this one and set a throttle cut. So by going to the menu system and throttle cut and select this, I usually pick this uh, switch on the back. So I have to select this one and press once and select this switch, which is the switch H. So now I actually have a uh, throttle cut on this switch, which is really nice. Next uh, thing is actually to, to bind the TX to the RC airplane. So it's a good thing to actually enable throttle cut first, so nothing weird happens. Then you have to plug in the battery on your RV7 and quite quickly just press this bind button. And you can actually see that the receiver is flashing yellow and it's ready to be bound to the TX. On the TX, then you go into the menu, you scroll down to where it says bind and select yes, and then uh, select bind. So now the TX and the AR631 is actually binding uh, to each other and uh, the telemetry is also auto configured. 
So that's the setup done for the RV7, really simple way with this Spectrum system. This was the basic setup for the RV7. And then we have two more features which you might want to enable. So the first one we're going to look at is the reverse, reverse thrust option. So use the, uh, the uh, uh, programming feature in the NX10 to set it up. And then I'm going to look at how to enable safe select in a really easy way. Now I'm going to show you how to set up reverse thrust on my NX10 for the RV7. So first off, let's uh, power the NX10, let it boot. And then you actually plug in the battery in your RV7 and let it, it boot and then quickly scroll with this wheel to the far uh, right side and this in low position and this one to the left and down for a few seconds until the display says step number two. And then you go to the right and down for a few seconds and then you've actually entered the avian ESC menu. So by using this right stick you actually navigate so just press it down, and you go to brake type, and this has to be changed. So just by going right, uh, one and two times, it does actually say reverse. So that's the option we want to have. And then go down, and uh, you have to scroll down to the last page in the ESC menu. There are a few options. And on the last page, then we can actually see that the thrust reverse is on channel seven. And this is the, uh, a good starting point. So remember the, the channel seven and then go to exit with safe and uh, go to the right. So now we actually program the AVN EC to do thrust reverse. So the uh, next thing then is just to scroll to the far um, left side and go into the menu going to the system setup page and go down to channel assign and by scrolling down to this one I'll set this one up to uh, be the E switch which is this and you can uh, actually just press this one and you can choose whichever switch you like so if you want this one you just have to turn this one or this one uh, or this one so whichever switch you choose just press this once and uh, pick the switch you want and then just pressing once more and it's uh, all saved so uh, by going back then and using this switch you can actually do thrust reverse by just uh, going up or down so that's a pretty easy way to do reverse thrust on the new avian EVC if you have like the, uh, the new smart uh, spectrum tx if you want to enable safe select on the rv7 you can use the bind plug and use the procedure according to the manual, but I found out there is a much simpler way. So by just going into the menu system on your TX and scroll down to forward programming, you can go to the gyro settings option and safe select. And just by enable safe select over here, you actually have safe select enabled. And by default, the save select channel should be gear. And gear uh, is usually set up to this A switch on the back of the, on the left back side of the TX. So you can actually hear that the RC plane is doing the auto stabilization thing. And you can also see it on the display. So that's a really simple way to actually do forward uh, programming safe select setup. Now that the E-Flight RV7 is fully assembled, it's time to get this one up in the air. And after the flight, I will actually talk more about what I think about this RV7. It's time to get this Vans RV7 up in the air. Really easy takeoff. It feels really smooth to fly. That's the way I like it. Rolls really easy. I'm 
got a good motor sound as well. No odd prop noise. Just by increasing throttle when you climb, uh, it responds. And one thing I like to do is to just do rolls and loops without pushing power too much and this RV7 uh, does it really well. So it might be difficult for the camera to pick up the LED light but they are really nicely looking and makes flying uh, like in these conditions a little bit of a low light condition much easier and especially this tail light is uh, a light I would like to see on more RC airplanes because they make them so much easier to orientate and especially this one which has two white front facing LED lights on the wings and then the um, rear facing white one as well so as you can see uh, you can do almost anything with this with ease you don't have to use much power. On the other hand, it's not a speedy RC airplane, so it's in the middle ground. You can do slower aerobatic moves with the ease. And even without flaps, it does slow down and feels rock steady to fly. And on this flight, I'm using a Spectrum Smart 4S 2200 milliamp battery. So I haven't uh, tried 3S, but uh, as far as flying this one, I think it really, 4S is a good choice to give it uh, a good amount of agility. So you can do just some crazy maneuvers if you like to without experience any crazy stall or odd behavior. It's super well controlled. It's almost a little bit too easy to fly. And it does remind me how the uh, E-Flight Mustang P51 1.2 meter just uh, in the way it sounds and the way it handles I think the Mustang P51 is a little bit more efficient design on the airframe so it is a little bit more speedy but they are very similar when you fly them so it's uh, they are like brothers if you compare the flying experience and both of them are of course tail draggers and low wing RC playing with flaps but this is a civilian aerobatic RC airplane. So I set the timer for five minutes. And this one does feature the smart ESC, so I do get beeping uh, if I push the battery too hard, which is a super great feature just to be safe when you fly. So you can more or less just keep on flying until the ESC alarms triggers and then you have to worry about landing. All the flaps you can see. No ballooning. Just slows down in a good way. It's not as slow, I would say, as the Mustang P51. Let's get it down then. And flare at the end. Oh yeah, <laughs> really, really smooth landing from this RV7. I have to say I, I've, I enjoyed the flight very much. This was uh, just a totally enjoyable experience. And of course you have this reverse thrust. I have to try 
uh, I'm not using using it usually, but uh, as it is available, why not just try it? And one more time. Let's go into reverse. So uh, that's the E-Flight RV7. I would say it's one of the greatest E-Flight low-wing RC airplanes. Some final thoughts then about this E-Flight RV7. Uh, as uh, I said <laughs> previously, I, I was eagerly uh, anticipating this one to be released. Uh, so I, I just purchased it uh, as soon as I could because I think it's a, a beautiful looking RS airplane. And I really like the size also. I think the from 1100 millimeter to uh, like 1300 millimeter is a it's a really manageable size when it comes to transportation. And they are they look great in the air and they are usually really rock steady when you fly them. And this is no exception because I think this uh, might be one of the best low wing RC airplanes I've uh, flown. Actually, it's it's. Um, it's so easy and well controlled. Uh, it's not the, a, a super snappy or super speedy RC airplane, but it's like uh, it's a golden uh, middle ground. It does everything good, nothing bad really. If you want to fly slow, it certainly is possible and, and really beautiful to look at. The LED lights and the flaps um, makes this one a, a really fully featured RC airplane, so don't miss anything. I think the reverse thrust is of, of course a, a fun thing and nothing I would uh, use because I think that's not really sure if you can put, uh, I don't think you can, you can put uh, floats on this one, but uh, reverse thrust is only useful to me at least when you have an RC airplane on floats, then it's uh, super great to be able to maneuver the plane on water. Uh, so <laughs> it's a bit sad actually that this one doesn't have uh, mounts to do floats because it would be super uh, beautiful to, to fly with floats but I guess the original doesn't have floats so that's why uh, Horizon Hobby or eFly doesn't want to do floats on this one. Um, so uh, everything is, is, uh, is, is really great and there are, uh, I don't know if, if there is anything negative to say about this one. Uh, I, I did only fly this on 4S batteries, 2200 milliamp batteries. And to me, uh, I, uh, I guess I only, I always want to have some more agility on an RS airplane. And although this, uh, this plane RV7 doesn't really lack in any area, uh, I could appreciate even more power and even more speed and agility from it but it, it's not uh, it's not bad in a way it's just uh, it's a golden middle ground where it just flies fantastic uh, and looks beautiful and it does have the right features so uh, as far as i'm concerned this is uh, a highly recommended low wing rc airplane in this size it's uh, it's just super great